Hello friends, do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for more such video updates. Friends, today we are going to talk about one of the most important topic that is Kingdom Plantae and subtopic Bryophyta. When we talk about Bryophyta, the word Bryo means moss and the word Phyta means plants. So we are going to discuss Bryophyta in detail with respect to your syllabus. When we talk about characteristics of Bryophyta, first we need to understand the habitat. So all the bryophytes they are mostly terrestrial. They prefer shady and moist places. When we talk about numbers of bryophytes, we need to know that there are total 960 genera and 2400 species of bryophyte on this earth. When we talk about body of bryophyte, it is thalloid, leafy like plant body. So in bryophyte there is no true root, stem and leaves. So what we need to understand, if they have no true root, stem and leaf, instead of root they have rhizoids which works like root. For stem they have stem like axis and for leaves they have leafy appendages. Bryophytes they are called as amphibian plants. Why they are called as amphibian plants? Because they require water for fertilization to complete their life cycle. Even one drop water if required for fertilization, then those organisms are amphibians. So here the bryophyte is an amphibian plant. When we talk about vascular tissues, so in bryophytes, xylem and phloem are absent. When we talk about reproduction, the bryophytes reproduce in three different ways. Asexual reproduction, vegetative reproduction and sexual reproduction. When we talk about asexual reproduction, it is by spore formation. Vegetative reproduction is by tuber or gamete. Sexual reproduction is by formation of gametes. When we talk about life cycle or lifestyle of bryophyta, they show alternation of generation. They show heteromorphic alternation of generation. It means in bryophyta, there are two phases gametophytic phase and the sporophytic phase. So in gametophytic generation how it is? So we say that it is dominant, green, haploid and independent phase. When we talk about sporophytic, they are recessive, diploid, partially dependent on gametophytic phase. When we talk about bryophyte includes two groups, hepatici and mosses. So bryophytes has two group, one is called as hepatici and mosses. Hepatici includes liverwort and mosses includes funeria. Friends, let's understand liverwort. When we talk about liverwort, the habitat of liverwort, since they are bryophyte, the habitat is moist and shady place. When we talk about body of liverwort, so body is thallus. Thallus means not differentiated into root stem and leaves. They are dorsiventral means from dorsal side and ventral side they are flattened. They are prostrate run parallel to the earth surface. They have unicellular rhizoids, stem like axis and leafy appendages. When we go with respect to reproduction of liverwort, they reproduce asexually, sexually and by vegetative method. So Whenever we talk about asexual reproduction, in asexual reproduction it takes place by spores, sexual reproduction by fusion of gametes and vegetative by fragmentation or gamete. When we talk about sporophyte of bryophyta, it is differentiated into foot, setae and capsule. So when we talk about capsule, it is the most important part because it contains haploid spores. They are produced by meiosis and they produce the gametophyte. Example for liverwort is Rixia and Marchantia. For Rixia, we need to understand that they are aquatic bryophytes. When we go for the next group that is mosses. So muscae includes mosses. It has two phase, gametophytic phase. One is protonema stage and second is leafy stage. What exactly is protonema stage? So whenever we talk about protonema stage, we need to understand the characteristics. 
Number one, they are prostrate, runs parallel to the soil. They are green, they show branches, they are filamentous and they are also called as juvenile gametophyte because it will give rise to gametophyte and rhodonema stage bears many birds which helps in vegetative propagation. When we talk about leafy stage, we need to understand that the, it is produced from the birds. They have erect and slender main axis. The branches, they bear spiral leaf-like structure. And leafy stage is fixed in soil by the help of rhizoids. Rhizoids does the function same like root absorption of water and fixation to the soil. When we talk about reproduction in muskai or moss, they reproduce again by sexual method. So it has antheridium. There is a spelling mistake. It is antheridium, T H E R I D I M, and archegonium. Antheridium produces antheridia, archegonium produces archegonia. Antheridium is the male gamete, and archegonia is the female gamete. Both male and female gamete they unite together in the process of fertilization and form zygote. Zygote develops into sporophyte which gives rise to foot, setae and capsule. We need to understand antheridia is haploid, archegonia is haploid, zygote is diploid and sporophyte is diploid. The capsule undergoes meiosis and produces haploid spores. When we talk about moss, it includes two examples. One is funeria and next one is poly. Let's understand the life cycle, how the funeria or the moss they complete their life cycle. So let us assume this to be funeria. The funeria has two phases. the male gametophyte and the female gametophyte is present in the same. These are the rhizoids which will work like roots, helps in absorption and fixation. The female gametophyte and the male gametophyte, the root stem is colloid and the leafy part is phyloid. So whenever there is a rain, the rain water falls on the plant. So some drops of water will splash out. So as the rain water falls on the male gametophyte or the female gametophyte part, some drops of water will splash out and in this water droplet which is splashing out after hitting the surface will carry the antheridia. The antheridia is the male gamete. Now the antheridia will be having flagella. That flagella will help the antheridia to swim and reach to the female gamete under the chemical attraction. Female gametophyte releases that chemical so as to attract the antheridia and when male gametophyte reaches it results in the process of fertilization. So the fertilization is under the chemotactic movement where the male gets attracted towards the female with the help of water molecule it swims. So let us assume this to be the fertilized part and after fertilization it gives rise to three important part that is called as foot, setae and capsule. So this is the sporophytic generation of the bryophytes. Now the capsule contains lots of spores which is produced by a process of meiosis. Now the capsule dries up and the spores are released which spreads with the help of air and let's say the spore falls somewhere on the earth's surface few distance away. So these spores now will germinate and it give rise to the branched part or the protonema stage of the gametophytic phase. Now this protonema stage will be prostrate, branched and filamentous. So it has many birds actually. These birds will give rise to the male and the female gametophyte again. So this male and female gametophyte will develop at many places on the protonema stage. And again when the water falls on these gametophyte, the cycle repeats again and fertilization takes place. Hope you have understood the concept. Do subscribe to the channel and give a like for the video of Biophyte. Thank you very much.